All right, here we go. Today's lesson is on manipulating formulas. Um, what we're going to do here is we are going to rearrange formulas so that we are solving for a specific variable. Uh, for this first one, um, we're just going to solve for x. Okay, so here's our equation. We're just going to solve for x. That means we're going to get x by itself. So what we're going to do here is the first thing we have to do is subtract 3y from both sides. And that's going to give us a negative 5x is equal to negative 3y minus 4. So now to get x by itself, we just have to divide everything by a negative 5. And we finish with x is equal to a positive 3 fifths y plus 4 fifths. And we're done. We have x all by itself. Okay, so this is the same thing, it means uh, i is equal to prt, we want to solve for r. It means we're going to get r by itself. So, to get rid of the p and t on the right side, to have it just r all by itself, we have to divide both sides by p and t. Now you can do this all at the exact same time, because these p's and t's will both cancel, and then you're going to be left with r is equal to i over pt and it's as simple as that. Uh, they do get a little bit more uh, difficult especially once we get towards the problems at the end of this lesson so if you want pause try number three and four on your own number three you need to solve for W number four you need to solve for R and when you're ready press play and you'll get to see how it's done so here we go the first thing you have to do is get W on the right side all by itself. So we're going to have P minus 2L is equal to 2W and now you just have to divide everything by 2 and you will have P over 2 minus L is equal to W for this example. For number 4 we have to get R by itself. Now this one's a little tricky. You gotta go back and see if you remember a couple little things. Um, first of all we have to get R squared by itself. So we're gonna divide both sides by 4 pi. So we're gonna have A over 4 pi is equal to R squared. Now this is where you should remember we need to um, get r by itself. So how do you get r by itself? You need to take the square root of both sides. So that's going to give us the square root of a over 4 pi. Well, we have the square root of a. The square root of 4 is 2 radical pi because we can't take the square root of pi. And that's equal to r. And of course, don't forget your plus or minus. So here's the fun part. What do you do with that square root of pi in the denominator? Because if you remember back in the day, you are not allowed to have radicals in the denominator. So you probably learned you have to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of pi. Maybe you learned the shortcut where you just bring the radical from the bottom to the top and leave the inside down in the bottom. However you learned it, you just have to make sure that the square root of pi is no longer in the denominator. So then you would just have the radius is equal to plus or minus the square root of a pi over 2 pi. Yep, a little tricky from time to time, but back in the day, you learned how to work with radicals. If you forgot how to work with radicals, make sure you ask me when you see me tomorrow. Okay, number five and number six. Number five, all we have to do is solve for h. This one is a, another pretty f straightforward, simple question. Since we're getting h by itself, we're allowed to have the r squared down in the bottom, so we're just going to divide both sides by pi r squared, and we have h is equal to v divided by pi r squared. No big deal for number five. But number six, we start getting a little bit tricky because we want to express the area in terms of h. So the first thing you want to remember is that the area of a triangle is one half the base times height. And if the perimeter of this triangle is 27, that'll tell you, since there's all these congruency tick marks on the triangle, that this is an equilateral triangle. So here we go. We have the perimeter is 27, which means each side is 9. So the area is equal to one half the base of 9 
times h. And we want to express the area in terms of h. That's what it's asking us to do. So we're allowed to have h in our final answer. As a matter of fact, we're supposed to. So then we're just going to have a is equal to 1 half of 9 is 9 halves h, and we are done. That's our final answer. We'll leave it exactly like that. Okay? Um, these last two questions are multi-stepped. So what we're going to do is we're going to do number 7 together, and then you're going to pause, and you're going to try number 8 on your own. So this is a little bit difficult because we are going to um, manipulate a formula and then plug it into another formula. So this says that h of an equilateral triangle is the square root of 3 over 2b. Okay, the height of an equilateral triangle is the square root of 3 over 2b. Then we're going to express the area in terms of h only. So what we need to do here first is set up our h is equal to the square root of 3 over 2b. Now since we want h to be in our final answer, we need to get b by itself. So to get rid of this fraction, we need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. And that'll cancel those fractions on this side and you will have b is equal to 2 over root 3 h. Just like in one of the earlier examples, we are not allowed to have a radical in the denominator. So we are going to rewrite that however you learned it back in the day. 2 root 3 over 3 h. Okay? So now that we solved for b, we're going to use b in the area formula for a triangle, which is a is equal to 1 half base times height. Now see that we have b. Remember, we want h only in our equation. So the area is equal to 1 half, and now we know b in terms of h is 2 root 3 over 3 h times h. And now it's just a little bit of manipulating um, all of that. So we can take half of 2 thirds, so that's just going to cancel these 2's and 2's, so that's going to leave us with 1 third. And then we have h times h, which is going to turn into h squared, so this will simplify to the area is equal to root 3 over 3 h squared. Now that's what it means to solve in terms of h only. Um, so the only variable in this area formula is h. Okay, like I said, it's a little bit tricky. Now number 8 does not say in terms of p only. Uh, but p will need to be in your formula. So it says that a is equal to 2x squared y, p is equal to 4x. What you need to do is you need to solve for a in terms of p. Now I'll give you a little hint. Your final answer will have a equals something with p and y. Um, so go ahead, pause the video, try it on your own, and we'll go step by step as soon as you're ready. So here we go. We want p in our answer. So notice how this has an x and this has an x. If we solve for x with the perimeter equation, we can just substitute the x into the area equation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get x by itself by dividing both sides by 4. And we know that x is equal to p over 4. And this is where the fun stuff happens. Now we're going to substitute that into our equation. a is equal to 2. Now x is p over 4 squared y. So now we have to square this. So this is going to turn into 2 times p squared over 4 squared is 16 y. And then we have 2 divided by 16, which is just going to simplify to 1 eighth. So our final answer is a is equal to p squared over 8y. Or you can put the y on top if you prefer. You can have p squared y over 8. Either one of those is the correct answer. Okay, well that takes us to the end of our lesson. Um, again, this is just manipulating formulas. You've done stuff like this back in the day. Um, another example of manipulating something is uh, when you took 
a standard form equation of a line and converted it into slope intercept form where you would get a y by yourself okay so that's this um, have a great day we'll see you soon